All right, before we dive on into today's uh, standard deck, I would like to shill one thing. I'm going to shill this at the start of all the decks today. For the next week, I've got a Raid Shadow Legend sponsorship, which is a game we've done a little bit of in the past. We want a really easy way to support my content. Um, give it a download on PC using my link there in chat. If you're on YouTube, it'll be under the video in the comments and uh, play through the tutorial. If I have 180 people do that the next week, I get a little like, a nice little bonus from them. I appreciate the support. If you've done that on mobile before, you can do that on PC to support my content all the same. Anywho, this is the last standard deck for a while. Um, it actually might not be that bad. So we got Obosh the Prey Piercer here in our otherwise mono red beatdown deck. So we got a bunch of one drops here. They get to play Heraldic Banner as a way to increase their attack. And then Heraldic Banner doubles up as a way to ramp into Obosh. So Obosh in this deck in a lot of ways is kind of like a Tor brand that you always have that you don't have to draw. Um, you do have the drawback of not being able to play two or four mana cards or Ember Cleave. But the rest of the deck should be fairly consistent with uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 21 mana creatures here. So let's go ahead and pop on into some ladder matches with this. And uh, hopefully we can end standard for the last little while on this channel on a high-ish note. Thanks for the 10 months, Mox. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Dan's great. I'm excited to make an Obosh for our opponent's agents. Yep. Actually playing an Obosh mirror here. Again, there actually hasn't been that much Jeskai Luka in the Platinum Ladder. I think a lot of the people playing those more try-hard decks are probably already in Mythic for the season. Unfortunately, cannot attack Scorch Bitter in here, but this is unblockable. At least we get to smack them. I think we're just going to have Phoenix of the Ash here and smack them. They could have like a stomp here, but if this hits them in the air, the next turn we can light up the stage with it. I could light up the stage this turn, but then we're not guaranteed to be mana efficient. Although you could estimate that like maybe I have enough one drops in my deck that this is likely to spend all three mana this turn. Title needs to be updated. Thank you. No, you're fine, Alka. I appreciate it. I definitely missed that. Hey, Carmenova. Thanks for the 29 months. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Light them up. They're on fire. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Do, 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 do. My little pony crossover seems incredibly likely because Hasbro Hasbro owns that IP, right? That's why we had MLP sleeves in client. A new download. Did that just play over my audio? Let me mute that. Sorry. Thanks to whoever did that. <laughs> Sorry. It did. It was loud. Yep. So, Windows being Windows. Um, I had... I had set it up so... I had set it up so... 
you would only hear applications. Um, you could, you would only hear applications on my computer that I manually assigned to pipe into OBS, but the driver I was using for that, like, randomly just stopped working. Windows is the watch of OS is something like that. I feel like we're dead here, right? I feel like we're dead here. Kama Smurf, thanks for the Twitch Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Probably want Bone Crusher as a little touch of removal. Um, Scorch Spitter seems quite bad here. They have a lot of first strike creatures between these. Doesn't seem like it attacks in a lot of the time. Uh, claim the Firstborn seems reasonable. Forgot the the noise in the background reminded me I didn't put the the goal on the overlay though so I could do that. I think this is a keep with the light up the stage. And then I believe I set the browser source so it shouldn't make noise. Oh, it's under the cardboard live thing. Good call. I really wish cardboard live had an option to remove the deck list from the overlay. Their, their widget is super, super large and intrusive. No one drop out of them is strange. I wonder what they kept. Must be kind of clunky, huh? Running people over? Well, we got run over in the first one, playing a mirror here. Blazing Volley. Okay, so like this is, this is why they kept their hand almost 100%, right? I'm just playing out two things here. Missing. Missing on lands here feels real bad. We did keep a one lander, I suppose, though, even if we did have the draw two. What is what is weaponized, Synthero? Born and Fox. Wasn't the Brute a free attack? Oh, you have to pay a mana for it to be a free attack? Is how this card works? I 
How's this deck feeling? Well, so far we've only played a mirror. And I assume the answer is not very competitive because it's not a uh, it's not an Euro deck. It's not a not an Euro not a what's it called deck. We've had two games in a row where we missed a bunch of land drops. I guess we'll kill this now before they get an extra goat out of it. Yorian. Yeah, that's the word. Magic thing. I mean, Uro is very good. Uro is like better than a lot of the things. Hey, what are lands? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. I think I'd rather play Bone Crusher here because this currently would only have uh, two power in play. So that means it wouldn't be able to trade with their Annex, which isn't ideal. If opponent keeps flooding out here, we might have a real shot to get in this. Even though we stumbled because we have a lot of gas in the tank. They have a second shock in their hand. <sighs> everything, everything went so horribly wrong, chat. Everything, everything went so horribly wrong. I mean, we're not dead dead, but we're like mostly dead. So we're going to take 13 damage on this attack after we chump block the annex. Because the Bone Crusher does 12 with uh, Obash. And we just like have to jump block every turn for the rest of the game. So we're super dead. Yeah, it looked like, looked like we had like a small window to potentially stabilize there, but then they had claimed the firstborn to kind of slam the door shut on us. I might keep this. Seems fine. Opponent does not have a companion, so probably team of reclamation. Could be a brew as well. We are only in platinum. Yeah, it looks like a brew. Like in in platinum this late into the format. A lot of these will probably be brews. Mmm, could be. Could be the, uh, there was a Jund deck, Jund food deck, Jund sack deck that made top eight or top four of the, the Red Bull event. Spells, please. You love to see it. They have a Mayhem Devil. We probably just can't win. Card seems like it'll devour us. Kids can train for sport again in Netherlands, not competitive and keeping distance. We've had five plus kids quit because there's no matches. Yeah, I mean, like. It's going to be like a sportsless summer, right? Like, 
The only, the only way it seems, the only way I would imagine it's safe to like run sporting events is you have to be able to readily test everyone that's playing, right? And, and consistently be able to test them all. So like maybe major sporting events can like run, run games, can run, run games or matches or whatever they call them with, uh, they can run them with no audiences, no one in the stadiums, but like. Lower level sports, like recreational sports, there's no way you'll have well the testing for that anytime soon, I imagine. Yeah, I feel like there is logistical re issues with like baseball for kids with uh, like parents dropping them off and watching and audiences and stuff like that. Yeah, so like one of the things, uh, hold on, let's let's sideboard here really quick first. Uh, Bone Crush. I actually just like don't have anything here. Like I, I actually have zero cards in my seventy five that can kill a Mayhem Devil. Let's concede and fix that. I'm gonna go put some Red Cat Melees in my sideboard. Um, so one of the things Christy and I have been doing with the kids just to get out of the house a little bit to not just be fully pent up is we've been loading up in the car and driving around town for an hour to two hours, like parking a bunch and playing Pokemon Go, just like to be out of the house and change the scenery. And the number of people in Illinois in the uptown area where we typically drive around that were like out without masks, like waiting closely in line together at an ice cream place and stuff like that over the weekend was like kind of unsettling as someone that's like working hard to be responsible. Just like the fur furthest thing from essential possible and not, not being responsible while consuming their not essential thing. I'm just gonna put some red cat melees in here and trim around the edges. Yeah, this is the second the second wave is uh yeah. And that and that's in Illinois where we technically still have a stay at home order in place. So I can't I can't even imagine what's gonna happen in places that are pulling that back already. Just another red beer. Sure, why not? So this is actually a pretty good draw. I think we stomp this and then attack and then light up the stage post-combat. Sure, yeah, I could see it in places where they're requiring mass and people are actually respecting that. It could potentially be very reasonable. Again, like, you obviously can't keep anything closed for forever, but going from, like, 0 to 100 in just, like, a single day is, like, very ridiculous. People are just like, oh, oh, this should be over now. We shouldn't be doing this anymore. And it's just like, well... Hey, thanks to whoever checked out the raid sponsor there. I appreciate it. Looking for an easy, free way to support my content? Give that a download using my link and play through the tutorial to get counted. If we hit the stretch goal of 180 that they give me, I get a nice bonus, so I'd appreciate that.
We did we did find lands this game. We did we did find lands this game. I might have I might have overestimated how aggressive we were gonna be able to be here, huh? Although they're still missing lands. If I attack them here for 4-8 and they play Obosh next turn, I can go block here, take 6-7. See, so yeah, I think I just smack them. Right, we're actually doing pretty okay here. So, sitting on defense here isn't great because Tin Street Dodger is just going to mow me down. But I also just, like, don't have very good attacks. I guess I can escape this next turn. So I just, like, attack and force the trade here. If I attack and force the trade, this is going to come back as a 4. And then this will be, so 4-8... And then this is 4, so that's 12. So yeah, so if I attack and trade, I'm not dead. I'm not dead to them escaping it next turn. Well, I'd like that about you. You're very straightforward with your audience about your sponsors, what you get from them as part of sponsorships, and why you like the product. Because of that, I've been willing to try the things you sponsor. That sponsor you. Thanks, Eseric. Yeah, I turn I turn down bad things. And I'm like, I know Raid's been like advertised into the ground, but it's like it's a genuinely reasonable game if you like grindy mobile games. If you if you ask my wife, she would probably tell you I play it an unhealthy amount, and she probably wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> Thanks for the two months, King Sparkle. I appreciate that. Welcome back. What's the CMC of Adventure Creatures? The number printed in the corner. So when you stomp with Bone Crusher, it's even. But when you attack with it, it's odd. Or when it's a creature, it's odd. So your stomps only deal two with Obosh out, but this deals eight. Yes, if they target Bone Crusher while it's a creature, they will take double damage. Because this is a three converted mana cost creature dealing that damage. Is accurate. Main suggestions for someone who likes RPG but can't sink a lot of time into them. We're going to play some more Grifflands today. And Gr Grifflands has been really good. If you're looking for something on, on just the PC. I've liked, I've liked it a lot. We played that, played that the last two days, and we're going to play it again today, this evening, this evening, to wrap things up. That's a good question, too, because, like, is it a lot of time overall or a lot of time at once? Because, like, Raid, as a single-player game, you can, like, play in, play in bits and pieces, too. And same thing with Grifflands, right? Like, you can play it a little bit, pause it, and come back to it later. Games, games that you can, like, pause at any point are great. Are they just dead? I don't know. Is this lethal? Actually, yeah, they left themselves dead on board with that attack, right? Because, like, they take four and then they take at least two more. Yeah, because each of these hit for two on their trigger. So we, we didn't even need this for them to be dead here. This board state is like fencing with sledgehammers. That's, that's a great descriptor. That's a great, that's a great descriptor. But I think it's underappreciated slash respected in historic. I think the Underworld Breach decks have, are very, are very, very good. I also think that like historic doesn't have a lot of tournaments. So it's hard to really say objectively like this is underplayed or whatever. Because um, like we don't, we don't have a ton of data points for it.
So I like trimming this against all their first strike things. Red cap and the extra bone crusher giants come in here. What do I what do I want to trim for the last card to trim here? Probably just like an annex, I think. It's a little expensive. I'm bringing in other three drops, so trimming three drops seems like it makes sense. Expand dudes, maybe. It's tough, like, you know, even even asking Cool Stuff Inc. for like 500 bucks a month in store credit, like, isn't a small ask, right? That's a good, so reasonable chunk of change. Because, like, they're, Cool Stuff Inc.'s not collecting any entry fees or anything like that, right? So, like, they're just putting up that credit for us for the, in exchange for the advertising that we do for them. Their name being on all the stuff for, throughout the course of the event. Uh, the Warrior slash Contributor is related to the Raid Sponsorship. They're, they give me a bonus if I have a certain number of people install. So if I hit uh, 180 with them, yeah, installs plus tutorials, I get a bonus. And that one, that one's free. The Grifflands, I don't have any specific incentive if you uh, buy, buy or install it. But if that one goes well, they're more likely to come back to me in the future. Uh, the raid thing will be live for like the next week, Rock. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put that one up on my my YouTube stuff as well because we have a little bit to do it. No third lands from them. Feels good. Feels good. Uh, this campaign for raid is only only for PC, Bryce. If you try it on PC and like it, your account will transfer to mobile. But as far as me getting credit or a bonus, it's only good for PC installs. Yeah, yeah. This this game's looking about as uninteresting as the last mirror we played. Only we're winning this time. Opponent just like doesn't have a lot going on, and we're gonna beat them down. Uh, this is our second, second mono red mirror. Again, I think a lot of the people who are, like, still in platinum at this point, like, probably aren't playing Luka, because if they were playing Luka, they wouldn't be in platinum anymore. You know what? I'm actually... I feel like I'm probably supposed to lead on Scorch better there. Anybody played more Mono Red than me? What's what's objectively the correct one drop? Is, is it usually just this? I feel like it's usually just this. So it was Grifflands like Slay the Spire but with the story. Yeah, that's a good base level comparison. Another thing in addition to the story that it does differently from Slay the Spire is that Grifflands... Um, has two different decks with each character that you play through because you don't just punch everything you can also talk your way through some situations yeah the, the currency of grifflands is also shills which is funny it's on point for the channel Mono green flash, eh? That's cute. All right, I guess we attack with just this one. So we can pump it if they put a couple of counters on it. I think we're just dead at this point.
probably claim the firstborn in here. They have a lot of blockers, which Scorch Scorch Bitter seems like. Like it's our worst, uh, our worst one drop. Let's try this. Forgot that card had reach, right? How long have we been on Mono Red for? About half an hour. But this is also like our fourth match with the deck. Var Sav, thanks for the half a year. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. The quality of the matches in the MCQ is at MIQ is actually very reasonable. So, how is New York approaching their reopening? Are they are they doing the whole state at once? Are they doing it in parts? Like something something the Illinois governor did very well with the plan that he put forward, I think, is he talked about how the state wasn't all going to just reopen in the same timelines. So, like, different parts of the state would be opening at different rates depending on what metrics they meet. Sure, but, like, is he just opening all businesses in all parts of the state at the same time? Or is he, like, breaking up the state in different areas? Upstate, sure, yeah, good. That makes sense. Max owns the world, thanks for 19 months. Are they, are they opening it just based on a timeline or based on metrics being met would be my other question. So like, are they just saying on this day, these things happen? Or are there certain things that they'll have to pass? Case metrics, good. That's good too. From my, from my understanding of things, and again, I'm not a scientist, so my understanding might not be ideal. But from my understanding that, that makes the most sense. Don't, don't set firm days set metrics and as you hit those metrics allow things to start to start to happen when i attack there the qb dies if it blocks uh because i didn't want the pelt collector to hit me on the back swing Oh, super dead. We just had an all office meeting and the COO said one of his proudest decisions when we closed the office early his hardest is having to abide by government advice that he doesn't feel like it's protecting his staff. Sounds like a good company to work for. Oh, look at that. We found a Yorian chat. Let's dance with the devil, shall we? Speaking, speaking of Dancing with the Devil, I'm almost through season three of Lucifer. That show's great. Filthy Rebel Scum. Thank you for the 16 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I have watched the new Sabrina. The first two seasons of the new Sabrina are good. And the third one's not, like, bad, but, like, it's weird.
one of one of the things that's going to be interesting to see what happens as a result of all the COVID stuff is how do TV shows get delayed, right? Like, I feel like there's probably going to be some kind of new content gap in general. Like, a whole bunch of things that were scheduled to be in production are going to get all severely pushed back. Yeah, an animated stuff will be interesting. Definitely easier than in person. As someone who works in TV, I can tell you it's going to be bad. What you're seeing happening in sports right now will be everywhere else soon. Yeah, I kind of that kind of sounds uh, sounds realistic. I think I'm just phoenixing and smacking them for a bunch. Duck Doolittle, thanks for the brand new tier one sub. I appreciate that. Welcome to Oglandia. Thanks for keeping me around. Yeah, I mean, everything's going to get pushed back a little bit, but figuring out figuring out how to do animated stuff remotely is easier than figuring out how to do you can't do in-person stuff remotely, right? Like you could you can figure out how to do animated stuff from remote setups. Like in-person things just like won't happen. I think it's cute that people are analyzing my plays this game like they matter and like I could still win. I think it's adorable that you think my aggro deck can beat their deck. For people that haven't seen again, the opponent's deck is both incredibly greedy and incidentally very good against aggro. What am I trimming here? I definitely want Warboss and Chandra. I feel like it's just some threes, so I don't have too many threes for this. Kill him before turn five. Yeah, that's super easy, right? In their in their birth deck that also plays a three drop that makes two one one blockers and gains them two life. That's super realistic. Oliver two tweeted that this is the best deck he's played since Callblade. I I believe him as some as someone who played. I think the most dominant standard deck that I ever played with or against was Blue-White Delver during Innistrad Standard. And I think that the opponent's archetype is much, much better than Blue-White Delver was. Think it's as good as cat combo. You know, I didn't play a ton of standard then. You so white Delver had a 70% meta share and had a 63% win rate. Is that accurate? What what data are you going off for that? For that salt summoner? I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna say call. I'm gonna say call. Yeah, that's a good that's a good timeout, Dwight. It's a good that's a good timeout. I agree with that one. You're, if you're gonna show up here. And try and act like you have objective facts. Make sure you have the objective data to back up your objective facts. Please and thank you. Oh, we're gonna win! 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 How much to make sure Gem Palm Zombies get played before Saturday? Uh, I mean, I never really make guarantees like that. 
My my plan, Beansy, is to play at least 10 historic decks. My plan is to play at least 10 historic decks between Thursday and Friday. So making sure it's in the top 10 decks in the historic cube should get it played. And now we die on the draw. Harsh, but fair. Speaking speaking of hoots this weekend, the third Histor Hoaglandia Historic Open will be going on all day Saturday. If you're someone that's playing in that tournament, please make sure you submit your deck list by 7 a.m. Saturday morning. Everyone who does not have a deck list submitted by 7 a.m. Saturday morning will be dropped from the tournament and their spot will be given to someone on the wait list. Which, good segue, if you're someone that's not signed up for the event and would like to have the opportunity to play, we have a wait list that has less than a dozen people on it, I believe. And if past opens are any indication, there will be a good chunk of people that don't have deck lists submitted by the deadline. So, if you're interested in getting on the wait list, pop into the subs Discord server and fill out the wait list in the open announcements channel. It's a Google form. I think... Christy messaged me and said she added like five people from the waitlist into the event today as people had stuff come up because people did sign up a little bit out. You cannot currently submit a deck list on Melee with HA3 cards. That should be available Thursday or Friday, I believe. You are, you are correct that if you wanted to submit a deck super far in advance like right now, you cannot. 7, 7 a.m. Central is the deck list submission deadline. I don't know if that's strictly true, Nameless Inversion. We'll see. Like, even before we had a wait list, like the last one, we had, um... The last one, we only had, like, 20 people drop. And here, again, this is why the opponent's deck is busted. This is their turn five. They get to Agent of Treachery, take one of my things, and then they get to Yorian, blink Agent of Treachery, Fires, and Luka, take another one of my things, and cast more spells this turn. So again, if you're not playing the opponent's archetype and standard, you are not playing to be competitive. You are putting yourself at a strict disadvantage. Oh, look, and they get to Elspeth Conquers Death Me. So their turn here on turn five, they swept my board on turn four, and then they they took two things, they exiled a thing, and they have a four five and a two three and a planeswalker, and fires of invention in play still. They call me a pariah because they feel my strength. So again, done. And this is as as a small celebration here, um, as I put this deck away, and delete this. Um, that's the last standard deck in the deck queue. Ding dong, the format's dead. Witch is dead. Standard's dead. Ding dong, standard format's dead. Not gonna play that one no more, chat. Unless people send me giant piles of money, we're done playing standard on stream. We're gonna pivot over to some historic up next. What do we got for historic? We're gonna play some Jund mid-range to start here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit a quick ad roll. I'm going to take a screen screenshot and get this uploaded everywhere. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes with this. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 